Thanks for staying with us on the Sportsmax Zone. Education and sports have been intertwined since the first time a ball was kicked, thrown or caught. Knowledge is needed, power, and in some cases that power serves as the difference between grief and relief. We've been exposed to moments of horror and fear in sports where cheers and jeers turn swiftly to prayers as we are all reminded of how human we are. That's why first aid is so important, especially in sports where high-speed collisions are the way of many games. Rugby immediately comes to mind and that's why the Rugby Americas First Aid uh, Rugby Educators course continues to take precedence within the rugby community. Over six different Caribbean nationals assembled at the University of the West Indies Mona campus in Kingston, Jamaica earlier Friday to partake in courses being offered. Regional training manager of Rugby America's North, Scott Harland, spoke about having first aid trained personnel in every participating team. The injury rates in every sport, uh, every sport has injuries. But when we compare rugby, uh, yes, we have more types of collision injuries that uh, players do well with, but we know that we have to be ready for the types of impacts we have. Every sport should. Every sport should be paying the attention that rug rugby is paying to injuries. To get to that, we want trained people. So we have a goal by 2025, every team will have first aid trained people with it, whether it's 12 year olds, uh, 18 year olds, whether it's your national team. That someone out there on that field that day at practice or the game has some first aid training. That doesn't always mean a doctor, it just means the emergency first aid is, is important. Yes, and among those participating today in the course, Dylan Durant, president of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Rugby Union, expressing his desire to take the knowledge back home to SVG. When I first thought about the opportunity, it's something I wanted to jump at because we are lacking in that area in the sense that with more like, hmm, I want to try and put it in a simpler term with sports medicine is concerned. So in our area in rugby, I want to take back what I've learned here so I will have more trained personnel to assist with on-field care as well as not just volunteers but athletes as well so more persons who, are, who have the knowledge more persons to help which is better for everyone in the long run so in the past where we have had like injured persons and no one knows well had well known what to do so i'm trying to break that gap so just try and take it as much as i can here over the weekend to take back home to my union and better SVG rugby on a whole yeah, and Dylan really looks like a rugby man. Joining us now on the Sports Max Zone, Vice Chair of the Jamaica Rugby Football Union and First Aid Educator, Dr. Sharmila Rupchan Martin. Uh, Doc, welcome to the Sports Max Zone. It's not the first time that you've been on this show, so we are happy to wel <laughs> wel wel welcome you back again. But not under this hat. Not under this hat. Definitely not under this hat. This is the first time under this hat. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me about how satisfied are you with what happened at the seminar today? Oh, we had a wonderful day, ran very, very smoothly. Um, excellent to see the level of engagement with all the participants that were going through the educators' training. Um, so all in all, highly successful, fully engaged, looking forward to them moving on into tomorrow's session. Um, and today, as your clip would have shown a short while ago, what what was happening is they're being trained as educators but we're going to be running the first aid in rugby course shortly after so on sunday we're actually training coaches um athletes managers in first aid so some of these educators will have the opportunity to immediately apply what they've learned and be under supervision as educators as well before rugby is finished next week. Yeah, and obviously a lot of the participants, um, well, the timing, I just want to make the point that the timing is great because of the, the, the series of matches coming up in the, in the, in the next week. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So part of part of the the typical um, uh, running of a rugby tournament for Rugby Americas North, we have what is called a run super week. Um, so the 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 week starts off with these educational 
courses to try and ensure that persons are up to par with what you need them to be in different areas. And it may not always be medical training, but this year we've been focusing very heavily on um, the first aid and medical training for doctors and physical therapists. This is then followed by the tournament, so personnel can immediately, I mean, everything you learn translates into the tournament, which begins on Wednesday. Okay, so the course is about in managing injuries and especially impact injuries. Can you give us a sense of what are some of the more significant impact injuries and is that a primary focus of, of the course today or the course well, the next two days? Yes. So for rugby, the one that would be the most critical is, of course, concussion. So, you know, as you look at the sport, you'd realize that there are risks for, you know, head collisions with other players actually hitting your head on the ground as well. So concussion is the biggest one. And I think, you know, this is what makes the world rugby courses a little bit different from your average first aid course. I mean, many of us would have actually done first aid training, even myself in my previous profession as a physical therapist. Every year you're required to do your first aid certification, um, which is basic CPR. But the World Rugby course really brings a lot of attention to concussion in particular as the worst case scenario. And with concussion, the person can also end up with significant respiratory distress as well. Mm -hmm. So the focus is heavily around that in addition to your typical first aid course that you do with, you know, Red Cross or any one of the other agencies that offers basic first aid training. Mm -hmm. So that would be the biggest difference in terms of the, the, the focus. Is there any particular focus on, for example, brokenness? Because impact injuries usually sometimes end up with broken ribs, you know, broken shoulder, you know, shoulders, collarbones, that kind of stuff. Is, is there going to be any kind of emphasis on, on handling those situations before emergency services get onto the field, for example? So, so all, all, of, all of what you mentioned is covered. And in fact, they sort of come hand in hand. But oftentimes when you get concussion injuries as well, there is typically collision with other areas. So you can end up with problems elsewhere. Um, with the, with the broken ribs, the risk is puncture for the lungs, mm. and then the person goes into significant problems in terms of Shock. breathing mm. and dealing with that quickly. So over the next couple of days, yes, all of those things are covered. Even stabilizing a fracture properly before you move the person off the field, putting it into a splint before you move them off the field. These are all things that are covered in the first aid in rugby training course. All right. Mm. I wanted to extend... Uh, one of the, Go ahead. Sure, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was just wanting to point, one last thing I wanted to point out is that with the concussion injuries, the neck is also at high risk. So you hit your head, you're at risk in terms of, of possible injury to the spine. And the way that is managed on the field immediately can make a difference to an athlete being paralyzed or not being paralyzed. Mm. And, and I think that, again, is something that is significant with the, the, the rugby course and the training, looking at how do you stabilize these persons properly before you even move them to ensure the best possible outcome um, when they're off the field and they're being managed um, further on. I want to ask you, Kristen, in ext by extension, um, the, 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 the rugby tournament coming up is bringing back women's rugby to Jamaica for a long, after a projected, protracted time off. Is that one of the, the issues that may impact the popularity of the sport among women? The fact that these impact injuries can be so significant and given how sometimes you raise our girls to be a little bit more genteel, is that something that is a concern for you know, the, the administration of the sport in terms of getting more women involved, do you think? Um. Possible. I mean, I'd say that, yes, it probably has an impact on the extent to which 
to which women get involved in the sport. Um, and, you know, like when you listen to some of our female rugby players, um, there are several of them that would tell you that initially they probably never considered it a sport that they'd want to do because of just that fear in terms of impact. But then when they got out there and they tried it and they realized that in doing the sport as well, part of your coaching is not just about, um, you know, catching a ball, passing a ball, tackling, but it's also about safe tackling, learning techniques that ensure that you're protected um, when you're tackled, knowing how to fall safely. These are all part of the game. So whilst it's might, it, it might appear intimidating initially, um, I think once people get out there and they try it, um, you, you, you find that there are some of the women who decide that, yeah, this is, this is really not what I thought it would be. And, you know, I'd like to do this. I can't say I'm one of the females. So I'm preparing <laughs> myself right now. <laughs> I'm not one of those. I've, tr I've tried running and catching the ball. Um, uh, but, but, but I'm one of those that is af afraid of being tackled. <laughs> so, so it does have implications for us trying to grow, you know, grow the sport for women. Yeah. Um, what I will go and try with, you know, at my age is touch rugby, where you're not actually being tackled to the ground. Um, you, 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 you just get touched and, you know, you drop the ball because you, you, you've, it's the equivalent of being tackled. So touch rugby is for me, not tackle. <laughs> <laughs> I hear we're going to leave it there. But if I'm not mistaken, Leighton, maybe you can bear me out on this. The serious injury that um, Wade Van Niekerk had, wasn't it from touch rugby? Yeah, it was flag rugby. <laughs> yeah, so, so it, 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 it may not it may not be as gentle doc as you're suggesting but 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 always a always a pleasure talking to you yes yeah. thank you yeah. and all the best for the rest of the course yeah all right thanks yeah great time okay. back with more on the sports zone after this